I'm Mike Armstrong, I'm the Operations Manager for the High Definition Video Conferencing Pilot Project for the Department of Human Services. The innovation is all about high definition video conferencing and connecting customers up at where and when they need it. The initial idea has been around in, in Centrelink now for quite some time. We've had a couple of different iterations of it, but this has been the first time with the bandwidth and the technology that we can actually deliver a real-time face-to-face interview. What it's achieved is a lot of efficiencies for us, um, as in the department. Being able to have staff being able to video in to where sites are needing other help with staff. And so far, the feedback has been great, where they loved the video conferencing, they felt that it was very intimate, as in the, that the officer was really involved in what they were doing. My name is um, Michael Holborn. I work for Business Online Services, uh, specifically the Smart Forms project. The government had a lot of forms online, but they were difficult to find. Um, you had to go to individual sites and um, sort of do a lot of searching. So we put the forms in one area and we called that service Gov Forms. And it was sort of like a Google service for forms. We all know that sometimes with forms, they're not the most easy thing to fill out. So if we can provide a form that is tailored to you and help you to fill it out within the form, then it saves business time and then it saves government time in the back end. So there's forms that we've worked on that have consolidated 16 application forms into one um, and guide the user into filling that out. The first thing that business says is, well, you know, why haven't we heard about this before? And how do we get our government agencies um, within our councils or our state government or our federal government agencies that we're dealing with to get on board with this service? They see the technology and they see a benefit in it. Uh, and I guess that to me um, says that we're on the right track. I'm Helen Knight, I work in AGIMO in the Department of Finance. So the National Collaboration Framework came about following a directive from the former Online Communications Council of Ministers. So what we find in situations where agencies aren't using the NCF, and certainly before the NCF was developed, is that agencies will often pick up an existing memorandum of understanding. There was big inconsistency in terms of the quality of those agreements, but what's special about the NCF is that it isn't just an MOU template, it is a comprehensive framework that guides people through the development and the collaborative process from beginning to end. A current example of the NCF being used at the moment is for the whole of government uh, parliamentary workflow solution work, which is a shared services model between the Department of Finance and the Department of Education, where approximately 40 agencies are receiving services through that process, and the NCF is being used as the agreement making mechanism for that project. I'm Michelle Howe, I'm the Director of ABS Communication. So the census is conducted every five years by the ABS. While the data is used by people who are used to using the data, so for government to inform decision making, the general public probably don't have a great level of awareness of what it is used for. So without full participation, we can't get an accurate snapshot of the nation. So we developed Run That Town as a new and innovative dissemination tool for the 2011 census data release. So it tries to, one, I guess, show you in a short simulation what a census is and how it is run, and then also the importance of the data and what it can be used for. It's a five-star rating in the App Store, which, as you know, is through peer and player review. So far, it's been downloaded by over 70,000 people, um, and we're tracking that it's being downloaded at around 800 new users per month. So that's a good, I think, achievement for us and we try to do some ongoing promotion to make sure we maintain that level of download. My name is Alexis Diamond. I am in the Department of Education in the Strategic Capability Branch. We needed to find ways to help people in our department become more policy capable. What we have created is what we call our Policy Toolkit. So it's an online database essentially of tools and techniques that people can use to apply to their policy work in the department, so rather than duplicating effort by trying to work out and seek out materials to use for your work, you can come to the Policy Toolkit first. It's enabled a lot more people in the department to have access to information that they can support their policy development and policy work. The default in the past has been to find people outside the department who could support your policy work. But we want to say that we've got a lot of great resources in-house that can be applied to your policy work. My name is Rudy Rajik and I'm the Manager of Pensions Administration Team at ComSuper. 
We, we do a mail out to over 214,000 pensioners every six months. Pensioners were having problems in identifying the PAYG summaries. It looked exactly the same as the rest of the letter. Someone in the contact centre said, why don't we print them on a different colour so these pensioners can identify them. We thought it was a great idea and we thought it would be pretty simple to implement. It's achieved a huge reduction in phone calls around PAYGs, around 76%. And it's reduced anxiety for our pensioners. A great example of what can be achieved with just a tiny little change. And barely any money was spent. My name is Evelyn Chong, I work at the Department of Finance and I'm the service, GovShare Service Manager. GovShare is a new way to share information across government. It is an online repository developed for whole of government use. The problem we were facing before when, they, the, when the project was finished, there wasn't anywhere of visibility of that project to store or for reuse. So GovShare is designed to, once the project is finished, it can be placed on GovShare so other people can leverage on the experiences of that project or reuse the templates that was used by the project. We've seen a growth in numbers of users, um, numbers of uh, increased number of registered users, administrators and visits to the website. One of the items has already been downloaded 2,000 times. My name is Greg, I work for business.gov.au. Previous to our, um, starting this project, we had a suite of planning templates on the website. Now, the planning templates were very popular, but they suffer from a problem in that they're very static. The app itself for, for my biz plan, essentially it allows you to create a plan for, for your business for starting up. Uh, it runs you through what you need to do step by step. So going from starting an ABN, uh, and putting this information into um, a tablet, uh, any, any Android device or, or iPad. One of the, the pieces of feedback that we got is that people could take it to the bank, literally to, to a bank manager and show them this is my, my plan. Um, they can scroll through it, they can go to different sections and not have to fumble through paper. We've achieved 50,000 downloads of them, which is we think is quite good. Um, the business plan app in particular went really well. We were in the top 10 for business, uh, business apps in the App Store within the first week, so uh, we couldn't ask for much more than that. This bit of advice that I would um, provide is to do the planning up front, put the time in to actually do the planning. You do need to have some form of enthusiasm for, for innovation in order for it to succeed. Make sure that the boxes are ticked talk to the stakeholders, understand what the policies are, understand what the technology is and the information that's available out there. You cannot produce it all in-house. It's very important to have the right agency with the right skills to work on that. Just keep looking at what you've done and what you learnt from that and it just comes naturally that way. I like the idea of creating new things. Um, it's just a matter of having a go and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Allow a certain amount of risk to be able to, to get out there and, and try something. Find some people who aren't as risk adverse, who will be your supporters. Do it small and it's safe to fail, then kind of build it up is a nice approach to take with any activity, including this type of work. Try plan B, try plan C. I can't tell you how many times we use plan C. But the thing was, you get there in the end. The good innovations have, have come out of um, going out on a bit of a limb, I guess. You're seen as a, a leader within your industry, within your niche, and that can have other benefits too. And I think by innovating and learning from our mistakes, we can improve ourselves and offer better services for the government. Because sometimes it just needs to happen. I think innovation is fantastic. I genuinely believe that innovation is essential to the evolution of government. It's yeah, important to everything we do. If we don't innovate in an ongoing way that people want, we're going to lose them and we just become irrelevant basically. We have to be able to keep up with the small businesses and where they're at, if not ahead. If we simply go in the same path in which we go right now, it's not going to happen. Could you imagine a world where it wasn't innovative, we wouldn't be able to keep up with the amount of people coming through the doors anymore. And that's not because there's more and more unemployed, it's just people expect more and more. It's our responsibility as public servants to deliver high quality work in the most efficient and effective way that we can and innovation allows us to do that.